Hey guys, so I'm literally, uh, it doesn't look like it, but we're heading down to a birthday party here in like an hour after shower and stuff. Uh, had a few drinks last night, went to a late night movie with my wife. She has, she's been traveling a lot for work, so we had date night last night. But anyway, making excuses for why I haven't put out a, a full podcast video. But I did want to go through and just kind of run through the main card real quick for UFC 268 tonight. And just kind of give my quick picks for the main card. So first off, they moved... Uh, Justin Gage, Gaethje versus Michael Chandler. They're going to be opening up the main card. Um, that's a great fight. And Ariel Hawani hinted to this. I think he's great. They're probably doing that to give Trevor Trevor Whitman a break because he's going to be coaching Gaethje, Rose Namajunas, and Kamaru Usman on the main card. And back to back to back, that would be tough. So I don't know if that was a request from them or whatever, but main card is going to open up with a bang. In this fight, I kind of like Gaethje just because I think that his technical boxing and his head movement and all that stuff. I think it's going to I think he's going to be able to kind of pick Chandler apart in those boxing exchanges, right? But the thing that you have to watch out for Chandler for is that he, Chandler is that he's super explosive. He fucking is an amazing wrestler. Like I think his wrestling is going to be leagues above Justin Gaethje's and his ability to scramble. So if this fight gets to the ground, I think you're going to see that Chandler's more no, not only is he more explosive than Gaethje in the striking exchanges, but when he gets to the ground, I think he's going to be able to scramble around and get into some, like, advantageous positions on the ground there. I think he's just, I also think his submission game's a little bit slicker than Gaethje's, but all in all, I like Gaethje's ability to simply get back to the feet and just keep this, uh, the leg kicks, I think are going to be huge for Gaethje too. He's one of the best in the world at landing those, and I think that if he starts landing those with success, it's going to negate a lot of the power and a lot of the explosiveness that we were talking about for Michael Chandler. So I'm taking Gaethje in that one. I think it'll be a fun fight. I could see it go in the distance. I could see either guy getting a finish within the distance. Um, great fucking fight. Uh, I, I, and this is a card where I think that the odds on a lot of the fighters are just fucked. Like, I think Michael Chandler has a decent chance to win this fight. I think Gaethje probably does win, but I, as far as value on the money on the betting line, I like Michael Chandler, right? He's a he's a sizable underdog for how good of a chance I think he has. Not that I think he's going to win the fight. It's just like if you're looking at the value of the bet, I think it's on Chandler. Um, next fight is going to be, fuck, what's the order that it's in? I literally have it pulled up right here. Shane Burgos versus Billy Q. So Billy Q is a guy, man, who I was re just reading an article the other day, and the reason that he got started – Training martial arts, cause he got in like a fight outside of a restaurant or some shit and got headbutted in the, in the face and fractured his orbital. Well, speaking of getting fucking hit, look, I have a shiner from jujitsu last night. Some kid knee me in the face when we're doing all the takedowns, but uh, no big deal. It was just incidental, nothing intentional, right? But still, um, Billy Q gets his orbital fractured in some fight, and he's I, th I think he used to play hockey and shit, but he ended up picking martial arts as a self defense, and now he's kind of this world class fucking athlete, right? Fighting Shane Burgos. This is a tough fight to pick, actually. And again, one where I think the odds are kind of fucked, man. I think that Billy Quarantillo is a hard problem for anybody in that division to deal with just because of his style. You know, he does a lot of in and out stuff. He changes up the timing on his strikes a lot. He has this weird kind of awkward head movement. He throws big looping punches. He actually has pretty good entries on his takedowns. I think he's going to have a hard time keeping Shane Burgos on the ground if he does get him there. Just because Shane Burgos is so big and so strong. And, you know, he's, t he's pretty adept in that area, too. Like, I think Burgos is just going to be able to keep continually applying pressure to Billy Quarantillo and outstrike him in the boxing exchanges. And another thing that Shane Burgos throws really well is that, up, that, uh, that front kick right up the middle, right? He uses that as a range finder pretty well, and he beats the body up well with it. I like Shane Burgos in this fight, but again, I just think that Billy Quarantillo has that kind of style that can make this sort of, uh, like... A challenging fight for Burgos where it might go to decision and you're kind of like, I think Burgos won, but man, Quarantillo had his moments in that fight, right? I think that Burgos gets it done, but I do think that Quarantillo with his movement, his leg kicks, the angles that he attacks from, I think he presents some problems for a lot of people. And I think Burgos is going to kind of struggle to figure that out early. But as the second and third round goes along, I think that his pressure will allow him to kind of break through, right? Next up, Frankie Edgar versus Marlon Vera. I'm nervous as fuck for this fight. I went to Claren University. Didn't wrestle there or anything, but that's where Frankie Edgar went, right? All-American uh, D1 college wrestler. He wrestled, he wrestled at Claren University. Frankie Edgar is one of my like first favorite fighters ever. And he's just at this point in his career now, man, where he's getting older, and I feel like Cheeto Vera is in his prime. One thing that I think Frankie could do to... to 
I don't think Cheeto Vera's ever went up against a wrestler like Frankie, right? Or a guy that's going to like fight at the same pace and intensity that Frankie Edgar does. In a three-round fight, Frankie Edgar is going to look exactly the same in round three as he does in round one in terms of movement and cardio, right? As long as he's not getting rocked or beat up, as long as he's not getting abused, his cardio is going to hold up. And I'm wondering how Cheeto is going to deal with that movement and pressure and the the threat of the takedown because you see like look at Yair Rodriguez I know it was years ago when Frankie fought him but some guys when they haven't seen that level of wrestling and Frankie's a pretty good boxer too I think he's got some some like he he takes a little bit off the shots I think he could do with following through with them a little bit more he does some like short combos and stuff but um like I think he could extend on it a little more to make to open up his takedowns regardless um he could present problems for Marlon Vera in that department, though. If he can get the fight to the ground, I'm telling you, when you got a wrestler on top of you, man, and he just knows how to keep you there and beat up on you, and Frankie Edgar's a guy, when it gets to the ground, he's very active there. Um, I think Cheeto's ability to get back to his feet is, I think he's going to be able to return to his feet. Like, I don't think Frankie's going to be able to keep him grounded. But it's not necessarily that. It's like, after Cheeto gets back up, is he going to be able to get back up after the second takedown? How about the third? How about the fourth, right? So for him, I think it's going to be important to keep Frankie Edgar on the back foot and be the one pressing forward. If Frankie starts getting up against the cage and finding openings to get in on level changes, and uh, he can start really implementing his wrestling in addition to his boxing, you might see Cheeto Vera struggle a little bit. I'm telling you, when guys go up against veterans who are really good wrestlers, even if they're the better striker. Sometimes they struggle, but I do think Cheeto Vera gets it done. I think Cheeto Vera has more in the toolbox in terms of striking. I think his jiu-jitsu was solid enough to get him back to his feet and maybe even throw up some submission attempts to get him out of danger. I like Cheeto Vera, but again, man, this is one of those ones where Frankie Edgar might go out and show you like, oh, fuck, Vera needs to work on some takedown defense or just some little things, right? So... We'll see. Don't count Frankie Edgar out. I know he's like 36 years old. He's getting older. He's been knocked out a few times um, pretty violently too, but still the man. Still a tough fight for anybody, right? Look at his fight against Pedro Munoz. I mean, still he's still got it, man. He can still fight. He can still fight. Uh, Rose Nami Yunez versus Wei, Wei Li Zhang. Zhang Wei Li. Um, I hate that the, there's like no consistency in... And I don't know. Like, I've looked it up. I don't... I, somebody correct... Like, inform me if you know I never know what, I think you're supposed to pronounce her name Zhang Wei Li, but a lot of the times if you look on different sites, like the first and last names of Chinese fighters are often flipped on different sites depending on where you read them, so I never know which one to put first. Going with Zhang Wei Li versus Rose. Obviously the first fight, Rose knocked her the fuck out, but I think what's interesting in this fight is going to be kind of that blitzing style of Zhang Wei Li against the fluidity of Rose Nami Yunez. I think that's what makes this so exciting. Man, it, this is a very, very, very tough fight to pick. In my opinion, the toughest fight on the card to pick. I think that Rose probably wins. I think that her footwork, and if she can stay out of range of things and make Wei, Zhang Wei Li miss, then I think that she has a real opportunity to kind of pick her apart and maybe get another finish. But Zhang Wei Li is somebody who is very aggressive, uses a lot of forward pressure, and very rarely... Very rarely does she throw one strike at a time. She's constantly stringing together combinations, and those combinations are coming at you lightning fast, right? So I think Zhang Wei Li has a very good chance to win. This is a very competitive fight, and I think it's going to come down to whether Rose is going to be able to maintain the distance and hold Wei Li Zhang, Zhang Wei Li, at the end of her jab. I keep fucking doing that, goddammit. But if she can hold her at the end of her jab, right, at the end of her punches and keep circling off and using good footwork and drawing Wei Li into traps drawing offense out of her, make her miss. I think Rose wins this fight, obviously, right? Like, it's all about who implements her game plan. But if Wei Li Zhang starts applying pressure, and one thing that Wei Li does well, guys, very well, a lot of people, and at a high level, you can't do this. Usually, at a high level, um, this is usually the case if you're a good striker anyway. But Wei Li does a very good job of cutting off the octagon, right? So if she can keep steady pressure on Rose, and Rose's footwork starts to falter, and you start seeing what Zhang Wei Li get through with some of these strikes and some of these aggressive combos that she throws, if she starts landing those, it might be, it could be trouble for Rose. Because like I said, once she starts landing that stuff, she's going to start capitalizing and it's going to start compounding and she's going to start cutting it off and it's going to kind of negate the footwork of Rose Nami Yunez. So to me, this is all about how well can Rose Nami Yunez hold a range. And guys, Rose is one of those fighters too who like, I just watched the Jessica Andrade rematch today. Very close fight. Very close fight, and she kind of looked out of rhythm in that to me. Her timing was a little bit off and everything. Um, 
Yeah, I think that Rose Nama Yunez uh, is one of the best in the world, but this fight is going to be a tough one for her. I know she's already beat this girl, knocked her out, but Zhang Weili is a fucking animal, and I think that this, like I said, this all boils down to range. If Zhang Weili can start pressing forward and pressing Nama Yunez backwards while cutting her off, I think, I think Zhang Weili picks up the win. But if Rose stays fluid, is slipping punches, making Zhang Weili miss, I think she can pick up the win. I think this fight might go the distance, and you might have another fucking... Yoana, Zhang Weili type war on your hands. You know what I mean? If these guys get to, if these two women get to duke it out for 25 minutes. So we'll see. I got, uh, I got Thug Rose though. It's just hard to take her after, after watching the last one. You know what I mean? The way she found that opening and capitalized on it. Got to roll with the champ. Uh, Kamar Usman versus Colby Covington, obviously. This is a fight where to me, I think Kamaru Usman gets the job done again. I think he's a better boxer than Colby Covington. I think he has a little bit of a stiffer jab. I think that he, uh, I think his I think he's stronger and I think that if they get into wrestling exchanges and stuff like that, it's gonna be hard for Colby to actually get Kamaru down. Um but if it stays on the feet, I kinda like Kamaru. I just think his striking is a little bit more sophisticated. Now, if you go back and watch the Jorge Mosfidal fight, the rematch, Kamaru will start making some mistakes though. Like he'll throw some big looping strikes that aren't fundamentally sound, right? So when he sticks to the fundamentals, kind of like he said in his interview after beating Jorge, he's one of the best in the world. But if you can get him out of position with stuff like that and kind of frustrate him, there's opportunities for you to land. And let's also not forget how close the first fight with Colby Covington was. Colby Covington had Kamaru Usman rocked a few times in that or a couple times in that fight at least, right? I know he ultimately lost, but it was a great war. And again, I think Kamaru Usman wins this fight. You know, I think he has the potential. I think he has... He's more dangerous. I think he's more powerful. I think he has a little bit better striking. I think the cardio is about the same. If anything, you know, maybe, I don't know. It's very close. I just think Kamara's a little bit better everywhere. But Colby Covington is smart and he's going to make adjustments. And he found a lot of success in his last fight uh, against Tyron. I mean, Tyron Woodley's a tough situation though. That's, that's another thing too, is that he only has one fight since his rematch with Kamaru, Right. And Kamaru's been pretty active against the top-level guys. And Colby beat Tyron Woodley. And it's kind of like, well, it's not a huge win all thing now, looking back on it, right? Like, it was a big victory for him. But I think everybody kind of saw that fight going that way. I think Colby Covington loses this fight. But at plus 250, man, that's like an implied, what is that? It's like 25% or some shit or 28%. You can't tell me that Colby Covington only has a 28% chance to win this fight. I'm rolling with Kamaru Usman. But my money's on Colby Covington. Again, just because of the value, right? So, um, just to recap real quick, I got Justin Gaethje beating Michael Chandler. I think he's a little bit more technical in the boxing exchanges. I think his head movement's a little bit better. I think he is going to have better positioning with his footwork, right? Just a little smoother. I think the leg kicks are going to slow Chandler down, whereas Chandler is going to have to rely on his explosiveness a little bit and try to back Gaethje up. And then I think he has to mix in the wrestling to be successful. Um, I got Bur Burgos over Billy Q, but don't be surprised if Billy Q's awkwardness, his movement, his head movement, the way he throws, you know, these shots from these weird angles. He kind of ducks down, comes up over top, throws these big looping shots. Um, he'll change up the timing on his strikes very well. I think he presents problems for a lot of guys. So I think Burgos gets out of this one with the decision victory, but it's going to be tough fought. And uh, there might it might be a split. You, I think it's going to be like... Like I said, I think it'll be one of those things where you feel like Burgos won, but you're like, damn, Billy gave him more trouble than I thought, right? Edgar versus Vera. I think Vera wins, but I could see Frankie presenting some problems with the wrestling and the footwork and the pace. Uh, Rose Nama Yunez versus Zhang Wei Li. I'm rolling with the champion. I think her fluidity, her footwork is going to be able to help her maintain the distance and everything. But if Zhang Wei Li starts getting inside, starts cutting the octagon off, and starts landing successfully and backing Rose up, and Rose is unable to make her miss, I think it's going to start leaning towards Zhang Weili. So this is a very interesting fight, and I think it kind of comes down to who makes the most adjustments in between rounds, right? Um, and then Kamaru Usman versus Colby Covington. Hard not to pick Kamaru in this one, but the first fight was very close. Colby Covington is very good. He can box. He keeps volume on you. He had Kamaru hurt a couple times in the first fight. I think Kamaru is better everywhere a little bit, but I think that Colby Covington at plus 250 is worth a little bit of money. So... I think that's going to recap everything. I know I didn't get really in-depth with this one, but I just kind of wanted to get a video out, let you guys know what I thought of the fights tonight. And uh, yeah, some of the lines, like I said, like I don't understand the Covington line. I don't really understand how Rose Nama Yunez is a plus 105 right now. And I don't, I get the Burgos line a little bit, but I think Billy Q, there's some value there as well, just because he's going to be, uh, 
Like I said, I think his, his style just kind of presents problems for people. So um, thank you guys for tuning in to watch. I appreciate it. Watching this little homemade video. My hair's all over the place. I got a black fucking eye. Look like shit. But I appreciate it either way. And uh, yeah, enjoy the fights tonight, guys. Have a good one. Bye-bye.